All right, everybody, welcome in. This is a reading for you for this week. If the title resonated with you, that's probably why you're here. <laughs> We're going to take a look at the first week of February. I will say, astrologically, February is pretty quiet. Um, it strikes me, uh, especially since we have uh, Saturn and Pluto ready to move into the next sign. I'll talk more about that later in the week. Uh, but since we have that happening in March, uh, February seems a time of sort of reconciling, reconciliation, getting the balance sheet balanced, okay? Um, you might need to tie up some loose ends, or there might be some things that are going on in relationships that it's like the final, um, okay, we got the lesson, you know, and we're moving on from this lesson, or we're um, understanding what uh, this last 20 years has been about right? Because Pluto moves so slowly, but Saturn, Saturn moves in signs every two years or so. So take a look at since 2020, because we've really experienced some very powerful things happening since 2020. So take a look back at the, the last couple of years. Um, Pluto was last in the sign of Aquarius. Let me get my notes here. Pluto was last in the sign before I go saying this. And, uh, Pluto was last. Yeah, Pluto's moving into Aquarius and Pluto was last in the sign of Aquarius back in um, Pluto was last in Capricorn back in 2008 when it was moving into Aquarius. So if you want to really understand what's happening uh, this March and what's going to be happening, you need to look back to 2008. OK, because that's the last time. Pluto was in Capricorn and Pluto moving into Aquarius now. Um, we've got a lot of the similar themes going on. Uh, Saturn and uh, Aquarius, Capricorn and Aquarius. We've got these movements from traditional to the non-traditional, from doing it the you know tried and true way to innovating our path. And that that is what's going on. So in 2008, we had a lot of upheaval. The banks fell off a cliff. Um, a lot of things happened in 2008 that pushed us into a more innovative kind of world uh, with the online um, explosion <laughs> of all of these platforms that you're watching right now. So let's see where we go. More of us watching TV in a different way, communicating a different way, being connected uh, by the internet in many, many different ways. Wondrous universe showing up that's one of those aquarian energies begin now and uncovering treasure beneath the surface lies a great bounty so some of you are really psyched to have pluto move into aquarius to have saturn move into pisces some of you are super psyched by this because the last couple of years has been really challenging and i will say that that's like woohoo it is exciting um and i think right now that if we get into our feeling, you know, we do have this um, this full moon in Leo happening this week, which is a very creative and playful kind of energy. Can we look back at, you know, 2008, or can we look back at different, uh, at that time when things were, uh, had similar energies to now and like, what did you learn? What would you do differently? Um, because there's some, and as with Saturn, it's always true. So Saturn moving into Pisces uh, from Aquarius, Saturn is saying, okay, what innovations um, have you been putting off or what things haven't you uh, updated for yourself? What, what are you holding on to uh, in terms of um, ideas that didn't pan out? And as we move from that Saturn, that Saturnian energy of, are you doing your homework and going to bed at a reasonable hour, um, moving into Pisces, Pisces is much more about dreaming. Saturn and Pisces mm -mm, don't really uh, jive. So what can be happening uh, starting in March might be a sense of like, I'm making, um, instead of it being like an uncomfortable energy, I'm making my dreams a reality. And I'm also looking for the uncovered, the, the diamond in the rough that I didn't see back in 2008, that I didn't really know was existing uh, something I left behind, some kind of lesson that I have had to learn again and again. And I'm really going to be um, 
in February, I'm really going to be taking my time and learning that lesson. So if you keep having cycles and cycles and cycles of, you know, dealing with unavailable partnerships or having problems with your job or money or something like that, really focus on that in February. This can be a really nice time to understand what the lessons are and kind of give closure to them so that this new uh, beautiful energy in March, which I will talk a lot more about, can emerge, okay? So the Ace of Pentacles underneath, that's a very beautiful energy. Good deal, what's coming across is the Eight of Swords. We're deciding to put down our mindsets that haven't been serving us. We're breaking free of belief or lack of belief in ourselves, especially as it relates to our money. Here's the Eight of Pentacles. And then, woo, the Eight of Cups, here we go. Let's move forward. Wow, some of you, look at all those eights. Three eights right in a row. <laughs> That uh, eights numerologically are the number of industry of taking action. And <clears throat> so even though February is a time of closing up, a time of, you know, finishing, you know, putting a period dot to the end of a sentence instead of starting a whole new story, uh, we're basically saying, okay, the things that held me back from figuring out, not figuring out, nope, the things that helped me back from realizing my true worth and value were mindset issues. Uh, they were telling me that I wasn't going to be able to achieve my dreams. I wasn't going to be able to have the love of my life. I wasn't going to be able to. And now we're sort of like, you know what? That is in our power. Come here, baby. That's in our power. All right. The eight of pentacles and the eight of cups. We're no longer allowing for a mindset to pun to punish us, but also to uh, hold us fast and not give us any kind of freedom once we awaken to oh this was the lesson okay how can i incorporate that in a much more um uh purposeful way on purpose right let's see where we go here we've got the six of pentacles in reverse this can be other people around you the justice card oh good things are balancing in that way too wow the star in reverse so some of you are dealing with people who are not being very grateful there's a lack of gratitude. There's a lack of um, graciousness. I feel like somebody around you who is a taker has not healed yet, has not been re recognized their own pattern yet. Somebody who's very entitled, um, who's really not, um, they think they're balanced, but they haven't healed the entitlement this is very entitled okay the six of pentacles it's like when it's this way there can be gratitude when it's this way it's like um where's my where's mine and i feel like you're dealing with somebody like that okay and the star in reverse says there's a lack a very big lack of gratitude with this person they're not um in any way shape or form seeing the balance you brought to the table with them or seeing your benefit. I feel like you're walking away from this person. Okay, Seven of Swords in reverse. Wow, lots of reverse here. Seven of Swords in reverse. Knight of Cups coming in. Oh, that's really beautiful. The Seven of Wands. So this is the lesson I'm talking about. I feel like this is coming up because of everything I said in the beginning of this reading about how we need to look back 20, 2020 and then look back to 2008 uh, ironically enough, lots of eights, right? 2008 and then the eights here in the reading. So a lot of you might need to look back and see where you weren't grateful for lessons or where you have a lack of gratitude for, for um, some kind of uh, expression to you. Somebody helped you out with something or there was, there was money flowing in or there was, a, a, not money flowing in, like a, a gift of money or a gift of an opportunity and really you didn't see that it was a gift or you didn't you were feeling like it was yours anyway or feeling very entitled that may have had the money flow out kind of quickly if there's no gratitude there the money flows out um if you're dealing with somebody that you have helped and there's not a lot of gratitude there then that person is flowing out okay you got me so no more no more um pretense no more lying no more you know, making things pretty just so you can um, go along to get along. We're not doing that. And I feel like there there's power in that because it's a boundary. You're basically saying, you know what, I, I appreciate that this was something 
that this connection between you and I, uh, we both have different lessons from it. And if you're definitely dealing with someone who's taking energy from you, energy, money, joy, whatever it is, you are absolutely um, feeling very, no, no guilt, <laughs> no guilt about walking away from this person. In fact, this, uh, let me get a timing card in this because there's justice in the middle here. Let me get a timing card. Empress, woo, Empress in reverse. Um, we did have uh, Venus and Mars. Oh, that's right before, isn't that right? Right, the day before, um, the day before we have the Leo full moon, we have Venus and Mars in square. So there can be this very, a big lack of generosity or a lack of love or a lack of gratitude. Uh, it just feels like someone, you have no guilt walking away from this person because they, they say one final thing that's just like, okay, <laughs> I, don't ha I don't have to explain myself. I can just move on, all right? You can just move on. And this, I got a, let me ask for a timing card. Um, this was my timing card that I got. And the Empress, you know, can be uh, by May or something like that. But I feel like it's a lot sooner. There is five cups here. So that is also the fifth month. I just feel like by May, this is going to be in the rearview mirror. Okay, so some of you are closing up a relationship that took a lot more from you than than you expected. Um, this person was also just taking and not uh, returning that favor, not feeling excited or grateful that you're in their life, not really having that. They're just sort of like, yeah, I deserve this. And, you know, it can also be a little bit of a sense of, um, you know, in your work, if, if this is you in your work, that people are taking you for granted or something like that. It's like, you know what, I'm not going to put any more effort uh, into this endeavor because I feel that nobody cares or no one's really saying that this is meaningful to them. So why should I keep going with this? Um, there's a little bit of a feeling of that, a little feeling of sadness or a feeling of loss if you do have people around you who are um, not being grateful for your gifts, you know, the gift here for you is that you know those gifts are super valuable. You know what you're bringing to the table is worthy of a lot more than any anything that this person has given back. So I see this as um, this year, a planting of the seed of something brand new, something more balanced with Libra in the middle there, something more joyful and more, um, I don't know, you feel seen. I think you're gonna feel more seen um, by someone in the future. And it's because of this person. So don't dismiss, you know, when we're talking about closing up, tying up old cycles and, and patterns that we have, one of those patterns is to overgive to people who don't appreciate us. I feel like that's a big one that's wrapping up right now and that we are no longer going to be giving to people who don't appreciate the effort or who don't see the value of us in their lives. Um, I mean, if you are somebody who has a person in your life that you feel, oh, geez, maybe I am taking that person for granted, this would be a good time to write that ship. Okay, this would be a really good time this week to write that ship. So I'm gonna see where we're going with this. I feel like there is a need um, for uh, you to walk away from a situation that you have spent a lot of time and effort in, um, a lot of time and effort, not necessarily building, but being a good partner or being a good, um, really bringing a lot to the table and the other person is just like, mm, I don't really care. Mm. So let's see where we go, shall we? Okay, I'm gonna continue on with this. Um, Reading, I will pull cards for each zodiac sign if this is your reading to give each one of you uh, a little more information specific to you. Okay? All right, link is below if you want to continue on, and I will see you over there. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.